everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about some fall picture book recommendations. I haven't gotten to do a picture book recommendation video in a long time uh, and I thought it was a great opportunity because some of these I have been saving for fall for almost a whole year. I oftentimes will go on the Amazon used books and get like the really cheap ones. Um, the first seasonal books when they're not in season and I'll show you a couple examples of things that I've done that in the past with just because they're not as popular and people aren't trying to race to get them. So some of these I've saved for quite a while. <laughs> the first one is one of, oh, it was my middle child's favorite book for a really long time. It is Where Is My Mummy by Carolyn Crimmy, illustrated by John Manders. And it's just kind of a fun little book about this little, we got it at the library first and he checked it out so many times we had to purchase it. And this little baby mummy who is going through, he's playing hide and seek with his mom and uh, he can't find her and he keeps running into all these other creatures. He sees, yeah, Drac and the Glob and Bones and they're, he's just saying, I'm not scared, I'm not scared. And then he does eventually get scared by something that's kind of funny at the end. Um, but he, of course, finds his, his, his mummy. It's just really, really a sweet, fun little book. Not too scary, obviously, for little kids. Um, and we've just really liked it at our house. So where's my mummy? is number one. <laughs> number two, we just bought this one. Um, I uh, listened to a podcast. It's called Books Between uh, when they're talking about children's literature. And this book, I just, uh, it, it needed to happen. It's Dan Santat's uh, After the Fall, he, How Humpty Dumpty Got Back Up Again. He also wrote the Smeagol, or no, the Beagle book about the imaginary friend this book though is perfect. It is about Humpty Dumpty and what happened when he decided uh, to keep trying uh, after his fall. And I don't want to spoil the ending because it literally took my breath away. Like literally, I the it all came circle. I just love it in children's books. Children's books can be so much deeper than sometimes we give them credit for. And I was not anticipating the ending. So uh, after the fall is. Yeah, Humpty Dumpty is, he's a bird watcher. Uh, and of course he becomes afraid of heights after falling off the wall after he's repaired. Um, this is him, he can't get up to the things he used to like, even like the good sugary cereals he can't reach. Uh, and so it's just a really beautifully done book. Uh, he won't climb up on his bunk bed even. Uh, it's super sweet. Uh, and I don't, I don't wanna show you the end because it really is just stunning. Uh, but I cannot recommend this book for anybody who's having a hard time getting up again after falling down, which is pretty much everybody in the universe. I probably will be reading this to myself <laughs> several times. And just a stirring thing for me that happened is a lot of times when I'm reading picture books with my kids, I'll ask them halfway through, like, what would you tell them? Or what would you do? And how would, how would you help him conquer his fear? And my my child, who's probably the most nervous of, of, of our three, uh, said he needs to face his fear. He can't let his fear tell him no. And I just, I, it was nice for him to vocalize that. Uh, I know he doesn't tell himself that enough. And so I know I will be reading this with him several million more times. <laughs> so this is, uh, yeah, I'm also getting it for my nephew for Christmas because it's a perfect book, perfect picture book. This next one is Hoot Owl, Master of Disguise. No deep lessons here, it's just pure fun. I got this at our library book sale earlier this year and it is, um, <laughs> Hoot Owl keeps trying to look for um, something to eat and he keeps trying to disguise himself and it's just not working out for him and eventually he does disguise himself and gets some some yummy food, but it's not what what you would expect. <laughs> it's just, I love picture books when the, the character is trying so hard because I feel like that's most of childhood. You keep trying and trying and it's not going how you want it to go and you're frustrated and he eventually gets there. So that's another fun one, but I thought with the disguises, Halloween coming up, it's just kind of fun. This next one is actually based on a Christian passage of scripture and Ecclesiastes, but also the song, uh, there is a season to everything turn turn uh, if you're familiar with that folk song uh, and what I, I think the illustrations are stunning but what I really love about it is the illustrations 
cover so many different cultures and parts of the world. Um, and so even just looking at them and trying to figure out where they're from, my kids like to do that. Uh, I think it's a great, I think most faiths have this idea of being content in each season and knowing that each season is necessary. Uh, fall is the time I think most about seasons. And so I just really love this book for children. Uh, you could even maybe play the song for them in the background, but I love how diverse uh, the illustrations are. It, it's enough to purchase the book for, uh, and it's one of my all-time favorites. The next two I'm going to show you are poetry books we use for our poetry tea time, and they're super perfect for Halloween. There's Monster Museum. This is illustrated by Gris Grimley, who does such fun, spooky, Tim Burton-esque illustrations. I, there's a Frankenstein book that he's illustrated. I desperately want to have, but I can't justify purchasing for myself. Uh, Gris Grimley just really, just look how ghoulish everything looks. Uh, my kids and I love just going through and reading the different pieces of poetry together. It's just a fun way to play with words. Uh, the giant, there's Bigfoot in here. Um, uh, you can kind of see the different illustrations. They're just so fun. So I love this one. And this one is Bone Poems by the American Museum of Natural History. I got this a while ago too. And it actually, while it's more focused on science, so you can kind of make this uh, read aloud throughout the year, because it has a lot of skeleton bone poems in it, uh, I just thought it was kind of a fun one. So if you really feel like you want something very um, smart, <laughs> I guess this is a fun one to do. And another poetry one, I would be amiss if I did not suggest Edgar Allan Poe for October reads. I mean, that's just kind of makes sense. Um, I'm excited about introducing him to my children. Uh, the Raven, of course, is a classic. I still remember my first Edgar Allan Poe was The Telltale Heart. Uh, I was in eighth grade, I think it was seventh or eighth grade, and my teacher played on a record uh, that she had uh, audio version of the Telltale Heart. And if you haven't ever read it before, I'm not going to spoil it. It's perfect, but it's fun to read or definitely listen to. And she had us rewrite the story from the perspective of the dead person. Uh, and I just thought it was just such an interesting assignment. Um, so Edgar Allan Poe has always been stuck in my psyche as a great one to inspire creative writing. And especially my eldest loves spooky everything. When we were on vacation, my husband and I, we all kind of led them in telling ghost stories around the fire. And it was probably one of my favorite memories to just uh, trying to figure out that line as a parent of, how, I know I want to scare them a little bit, but I don't want to go too far. <laughs> and uh, and even just hearing one of them say, can we stop now? Because I think, I'm, I think if we have another story, I won't be able to sleep. And I just... I probably can can thank Mrs. Witt, my teacher, for Edgar Allan Poe and inspiring the horror in my creative psyche. So this last one is another favorite. It's The Spider and the Fly. It is um, based on the Mary Howitt uh, poem, but it's Tony Ditter Lizzie. Did a Lizzie? I should have checked that pronunciation on that. Um, it's a Caldecott Award winner black and white illustrations but they're so stunning um it, if you are not familiar with the poem it is basically this fly who is being wooed by the spider saying oh no don't worry about me you should come come to my lair it's no big deal and uh it's and all of these dead let's see if i can find any these dead ghost insects are trying to warn her don't do it don't fall into its trap and um but he keeps complimenting her and leading her in and yeah, so it's just kind of a fun a fun story to read, but also an interesting one to talk about with kids about sometimes when people say nice things, they're trying to get something out of you. So I just, it's another fun one to read, but very spooky, perfect illustrations. So those are my fall recommendations for picture books. I would love to hear in the comments if you have any. I've also, we also love Frankenstein Makes a Sandwich uh, and Frankenstein and the Wedding Cake. Uh, I I'll link who that's below down 
I don't remember. We don't, we got it from the library ages ago and then they sold it and I have not acquired a new copy yet. Uh, but it's one of our favorite poetry collections too with some more fun. There's one about giving uh, garlic bread to Dracula. <laughs> it's just kind of fun. So I will talk to you all later. Bye.